Have you thought about what happens once, if and when this becomes just accepted public knowledge that there's, if there is another civilization that is communi- that is com- trying to communicate or traveling here and monitoring us and that is here with us and we're not alone, like if that does become common knowledge and accepted knowledge within the world and all the main governments in the world. Have you thought about like what the implications of that are? What, what are the public implications and how does that affect wars and military? And yeah, I don't have the answer for that uh, entirely, but I will say that I know there are efforts underway uh, to form uh, certain organizations that will study this from a more broad perspective like that. Um, of course, within the AIAA, I'm focusing on science and engineering around this topic, uh, but I think we'll hear soon about some other efforts that consider, you know, the sociological implications of this, that uh, include the economic implications of this, the xenopolitical nature of this. But to kind of get to what does that mean, xenopolitical? External politics. We okay. have to now consider something other than ourselves in our relationship with. Uh, you know, how we interact in the world, perhaps. Mm -hmm. How do we retain our agency if we do exist among, you know, highly technologically capable societies, right? I I think that's really what it boils down to if we do come to terms with this is that how do we maintain our dignity and our sovereignty in such an environment? And I think think, um, truly we have, well, I think that's what it boils down to really. How do we interface on perhaps a stage like that as the weaker candidate, but with the self-respect that we should have in order to operate at that level? Mm. Uh, these are the conversations and the questions I think that we'll be able to explore in a more organized manner. Why, once we kind of get past this this uncertainty phase, you know, this it's very there's so many more questions than there are uh, answers. That's the, that's gonna be that. the fun part. <sighs> Can't wait. I mean, it's it's scary. It's scary to think about what could happen because obviously, you know. Human, the human mind goes to all the fear first. Like, what could the worst? What would the worst case scenario be if the public knew that? Okay, that we're not everything. There's other beings here. Would the economy collapse? Would what would happen to religion? Like, it's it's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. I think we will do okay. I really do. I think that one of the reasons that perhaps this is an okay time for this is that. Our society is uh, measured in some sense right now by how fast we change, how fast our technology advances. And we see it all the time. Our society and our our social standards don't necessarily keep up with the technology. Our technology is created, and then we try to find a way to live with it in a sense. I don't think this is going to be much different in a sense. I think as long as we can retain our agency and our self-respect in a manner like we were just talking about, that we're going to be able to integrate that information because really that's just – you know, that's how the modern person lives right now. Every year there's new technology and, and something different. Um, not to mention the, the state of the world in some sense with COVID and everything else that's been going on. I think people's comfort in reality has been shook a little bit by the events of the past five to eight years. And if you did want to introduce some drastically different knowledge, I'd suggest that this would probably be a good time as mm-hmm. a shock would be lessened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am optimistic about it to an extent, just, you know, hearing some of the stories it doesn't seem like these things if they are from a different civilization are a threat to us it doesn't seem like they are here for bad they don't have any any mal intentions mm-hmm. especially when you hear you know some of the most fascinating things to me is is how there's been a, a large number of sightings near schools and you know with young children seeing these things and reporting these things and I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the, the Zimbabwe, the Rua school in Zimbabwe back in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. There was something that landed and there was like 30 or 40 school children that all witnessed the same exact thing. And there was a, uh, that famous Harvard psychiatrist who interviewed them all. And Mac. Yeah, yeah, John Mack. And, uh, you know, there was communications. They said that when they stared into the eyes of these things, that they felt this feeling of – be careful with technology. Technology can lead you down a dark path or it could be bad for your civilization. You know, probably not the thoughts that these children were having. Probably not a <laughs> natural thought yeah. that these children would be having. Yeah. Especially during that time in the early 90s. I mean, looking at where the world was then. Um, and then, you know, there were so many school sightings like this, which is, is very interesting to me how. 
you know, because when you think of children, how much more open minded they are than adults who are just hardwired into thinking the world is a certain way. Um, that, that alone just makes me, whether how real that is or not, that makes me optimistic about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'll say too, that I don't think what we're experiencing is probably a new phenomenon. Uh, I think that would, uh, be a statistical unlikeliness or mm -hmm. be unlikely statistically to think that this just started in the very recent past. Um, I, I, I work from the assumption that this has probably been going on much longer than that. Mm -hmm. Although I, you know, what that means in my daily thinking i don't know but mm -hmm. um i don't think this is new and if we if we if we assume that then um i don't think we can as, we have to have that much to fear as we better understand this because we're already living in that world we just don't know it right so the fear is all just our own internal change that we need to come to terms with yeah These stories like this it's, there's only two things you can really do with it in a sense you can accept it or you cannot mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people choose the latter uh like maybe perhaps as a school teacher because it's almost like a cognitive dissonance mm. in a sense where y you just – you cannot process that information and continue about in your normal life immediately. And so your brain just kind of dismisses it as either confusion or temporary yeah. stupidity or what have you yeah. and go about their lives. And I've noticed that in this conversation that I've been having more broadly about this topic. Sometimes there's just people that – and you, one of the best ways you can identify them is as soon as you mention something, quote unquote, aliens or just different or UAP, folks, just immediate laughter, right? Like a, the, the first reaction is a ha, you know, like, a, and then they like realize you're not laughing and, and then they kind of like, oh, okay. But they don't know how to move forward from that point because they're not ready to integrate that into their reality yet. I truly think people really do live in their own realities, yeah. right? You create your, you create your, perception of the world in your brain, right? And you do that based on your experiences, whether they're true or not, right? Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times I think people use that uh, kind of mentality to protect themselves from this type of information almost as a protection uh, mechanism where it's just too outside, you know, their scope of every day for them to really like just stop and integrate it because it's just too much. Right. It's too much and, and we're busy. Yeah. We're busy. We got shit to do. Yeah. Right. Like it's almost the same thing that you dealt with in the Navy in a way. Oh, a hundred percent. It's exactly the same way. We got missions to do. We got this, we got that. I want to promote. I want to do this. You know, I want to eventually get home and see my wife. And... Right. People are just so focused on their day to day lives and what they have to do in the next hour and staring at their phones on social media. <laughs> I mean, like, and we were, I mean, that was even true for us as fighter pilots when we were literally in the sky looking at these objects, right? <laughs> Which bad on us, but you know, we only have so much fuel and X, Y, and Z. And there's a lot yeah. of reasons why that is the best, you know, that was the right answer. Of course. Yeah. But it doesn't prevent me from looking back with a little bit of regret, wondering what we could have learned if we paid more attention at the time. Mm-hmm.